Hello, this is the second part of the 2012 Pat. So we're on to the physics questions now. We're kicking off with these multiple choice ones. I see they've gone up to two marks here. So with 10 marks, I can only assume we've only got five questions rather than the usual 10. So question 13, vintage steam locomotive made of iron has this mass, 10 meters long. How long is its scale model also made out of iron as a mass of one kilogram? Right, so mass is proportional to volume, which is proportional to the length cubed. So if we do length cubed divided by mass, they've got to be the same for each one. So 10 cubed divided by 6.5 times 10 to the 4 has got to be equal to L cubed divided by 1. So we can get rid of that and that. So L cubed is going to be 1 over 65, which is close to, I mean, 4 cubed is 64. So it's not far off being a quarter. So let's go with C. That's roughly 1 over 4 cubed. So that was good. Question 14, a gas cylinder has volume 0.02 cubic metres, contains 88 grams of CO2, temperature 27 degrees. There's R. What is the gas pressure? So we've got PV equals NRT. So we're after P. How many moles have we got here then? So CO2 is, well, the C is 12. The O is 16. So we've got two of those. So that adds up to 44. So we've got two moles. We've got two moles. So our pressure is going to be equal to 2 times 8.3 times 27. So 300 Kelvin divided by 0 0.02. OK, so we can cancel that 2 with that 2 and multiply by a 10 to the 2. So that is 24.9 times 10 to the 4. Well, I'm hoping that's going to be D. Is that right? So we've got, yeah, so we take one of those, make it 249 kilopascals. Yep, so that's 14. An electric car has a battery pack delivering 160 volts, 100 amps, steady current when moving at 36 kilometers per hour. What is the air resistance? Right, so the power is the volts times the amps. So it's uh, 16,000, I should say, joules per second. So 36 kilometers per hour. Let's get that into meters per second. So that would be 36000. That's our meters divided by 3600. So that's good. So that's 10 meters per second. So force times distance equals work done. So the force must be 1600 newtons, which is B. Right, these are going very nicely. Painted, a cube painted black is cut into 125 identical, identical cubes. How many of them are not painted, painted at all? OK, so we've got this cube. We painted the outside. So what happens then when this is split up? Right, so yeah, when we split it up, we're going to be taking the outer layer off all the way around. It's going to leave a smaller cube in the middle which is one in on each one, each side. So we're going to have a three cubed cube in the middle of this five cubed cube. So we must have 27 that aren't touching the outside because the others all will be. So that was quite straightforward. Right, we've now got question 17. A massive slider starts from rest at point S. So I think that's massive as in it's got mass rather than it's like the Godzilla of sliders. So it starts at point S, which is at the same height as point T at the top of the track and slides along a frictionless circular track as sketched below. Right. So what happens to the slider? Does not get to T, gets to T, falls straight down, gets to T, but then leaves the track falls in a parabola to the left, passes T, staying on the track all the way through. Right. Well, we've got two 
easy ones to rule out here because if we've got conservation of energy and s and t are at the same place if the slider gets back to t then it can't have any kinetic energy so it can't pass through t staying on the track it can't get to t and then move off in a trajectory to the left because you've got the same problem so it can't be either of those getting the t and falling straight down doesn't seem likely but let's try and rule that out so how are we going to think about this we've got the i don't want to go down the circular motion approach because it ends up being right let's think about what's happening with forces and if that doesn't work we'll try circular motion so for forces, when we get to the bottom, then we've got maximum kinetic energy at the bottom. And let's split this bit of track then into two parts on the circular motion. So in this part going up to halfway, we've got a reaction force, which is going to be going normal reaction force. We've got weight going downwards, but there's no friction. There's nothing that's going to make the the uh, slider come off of the track we must always have reaction force from there to there so it's always going to be in contact with the track so it must reach halfway up because otherwise we've lost energy somewhere we must have half of that gpe from s down to the bottom is still remaining so we must get halfway up and still be in contact with the track once we get past there, so we're going to get a little bit of the way past, which means we've now got a component of the velocity going upwards and a component of the velocity going to the left. And the forces acting on the object are weight going downwards and normal reaction force, which will be some combination of downwards and to the left. Yeah, so this is going to do it because the only way we're going to get rid of this component of the velocity, which is off to the left, is by having a resistant a resistance force, which is going off to the right. That's the only thing that's going to give us acceleration to the right in the horizontal direction. And we don't have that until we've got past T. So there's nothing that can remove that component of velocity once we got past halfway. And we must get to halfway for energy considerations. So, yeah, so that seems fine. So we definitely get past there. We've definitely always got a component to the left of velocity. So it can't get to T. There's just no way it can get there. Because yeah, if it does get up to T, then there's still no way we've got rid of that component of velocity, which breaks our conservation of energy. So we can rule that out and say it just doesn't get to T. So yeah yeah that works better i mean you could go through doing a circular motion approach for this and say okay we've got this centripetal force going on and is that you know when does that stop acting in which case that's the point that it comes off the track but talking through in terms of forces and velocities is quite often a quicker way to go with this it's a bit more intuitive i think so that's that one i think that's the last one that was five questions yeah so five two multiple choice questions they weren't bad that last one was a bit tricky but the first four weren't that bad at all really so after a difficult math section that was um they've started things off a bit easier in the first part of the physics section so we'll see how that continues in the rest of the paper obviously we know that the last question is a nightmare in this paper uh, through legend but uh, we'll see how the other written questions in physics go in the next video